Hello everybody and welcome to Taco here and today we are painting this Blood Angels Chaplain. Now again as always this is recorded from a Twitch stream so please excuse the view counter up in the top and any chat that appears on screen apologies for all of that. Now this video today will be focusing on black armour which is quite hard I will admit even I struggle with it sometimes but I can do it to a level where I'm competent with it. Oh, I believe I am. Now, we're using a chaplain for this just because I had a chaplain lying around. I could have used my own warriors, uh, black templars, iron warriors, iron hands, sorry, black templars, or anything else that's black, really. Now, this also works for gun casings and other similar things. I began with a base coat of chaos black spray, and over the top of that, we're going to do a few layers of Abaddon black thinned down. Doesn't need to be too much, just enough to fill in any of those gaps we missed. Now, you can get a Chaos Black pot of paint if you choose. Now, this is really just because, as I said last time, it leaves a slightly different texture from the spray can and the paint. And because I don't have a pot of Chaos Black paint, I'm going to be using Abaddon Black all over to build up that colour instead to work from. Now this is just going to be all over most of the armour. So any of the armour panels that are going to be black, which is a lot. The only things that aren't really are going to be the helmet, the weapons and a little bit of the trip, which is going to be gold or bone coloured. Of course the shoulder pads are going to be red, as they are with the chaplet. Next we're going to go on to Dark Reaper to do a rather thick edge highlight. Now we're going to do it thick because I'm going to be doing two edge highlights here. We're going to do a Dark Reaper and then a Rust Grey afterwards. You would also use Fenrisian Grey or pretty much any lighter colour. Thunderhawk Blue would also work. Um, but I don't have those paints at the moment and I quite like Rust Grey. I think it gives a good look. Now I'm going to use a medium layer brush. Get a bit on my palette. It's a brand new brush. A bit on my palette. Drop of water it down a bit, it's a bit too thin I think. Which, no, that's pretty alright. A nice tip on it. What we're going to do is you know, work it onto all the edges of the armour. This is going to be quite thick, so any larger flat areas I might all over in some places. Lar the larger of the small flat areas, like around the collar, I'll just put it all over. Same around the rim of the shoulder pad, just all over because it's quite thick. It's hard to do two edge highlights on a shoulder pad. If you do one all over and then one edge highlight, it works out a lot better. So around like that. And then on areas down here, like the knee pad, I'm just going to go along the edges with the tip of the brush and just mark them out. Now this is quite a thick highlight so you don't need to be too careful. And if you make any mistakes you can neaten it back up again with Abaddon Black or whichever black you use to base coat. And on the rounded bit all over because that's how I like it. Because it's rounded it tends to not have angles or points or edges. That's all of it is. not too many edges to this black armour because it's all got gold trim around the edge of it. Which this should be fairly quick to do, which is the only reason why I chose this one. So I have two chaplains to paint actually, but I chose this one because it's got a lot less edges to the armour. It's all got trim around it, which is going to be gold and other colours. So I'm going to quickly switch back to Abaddon Black now, just to fill in any gaps that I've missed. Not fill in any gaps, fill in any mistakes that I've missed. So we're just going to need a tiny bit on the palette. That way. And now I know there's a patch just here on the shoulder pad. Where I've just got onto the pad and instead of just the rim. I'm just going to move that across like that. Just 
fill it in a bit. Now it is important you reuse whatever colour you used as the base coat. That way when it dries it won't dry a different colour. that on the knee pad uh, thing circles in the center of the foot joints the ankles that's the word just in there like that just make the edges of it a bit thinner a bit more rounded do a dot in the middle of that one do a dot in the middle of that one I need to flat the armor there. I did that really chunky highlight. I did the same on this side. The same armor panel, actually. Okay. And I messed up under there. So next we're going to move on to normal oil. Now we're only going to use a tiny amount of this. So I'm going to get it onto my palette so I can control it. I'm going to be using my small layer, uh, medium layer brush even still just because I want plenty of control. Now I'm going to be running this along anywhere that's got rivets. So on his hands. Now this is because painting around each individual rivet can be very slow, very tedious and extremely time consuming. So any, all the rivets is what we're going to do. So this will just get around the rivets and shade them and we don't have to worry about shading the rest because it's black. As I said before, black is very hard to shade, so we're not going to. I'm also going to use it just in a few select places which you think could be a bit darker. I'm going to run it into the recesses behind the legs because I just want them a bit darker. And I may have got a bit of paint in there earlier, and I'm trying to hide my mistake. Next and finally for the black, we're going to go over to Rust Grey. Now you can use any light colour, Thunderhawk Blue, Rust Grey, Van Rizian Grey. I quite like Rust Grey for mine. Now we're going to, I'm switching over to a small layer brush here. And I'm just going to get the tippiest, tiniest point on my brush. So small the camera doesn't want to focus on it. And then we're just going to go at a 45 degree angle. Just going to paint over the edges. Around the edges even, not over the edges. Very slowly, very calmly just to build up an extra edge highlight now take your time with this because this is going to be a very slow step and if you mess up go back to the rust gray paint that back over and then switch back to Fenrisian gray again Rope. Focus on the rim of the chest. Look at that. Look how neat that highlight is on the rim. And the shoulder pad, I'll fix that later. Although it doesn't look too bad, it could just be scratches. If I do that with the rest of it. By that I mean mess up in a similar way. The rivets and the edge highlight around the chest plate there. I won't show you that side because I fucked up quite badly and I'm gonna have to neaten it up in a moment. But that side is lovely! Around the rivets there. That side I fucked up big time, so we're gonna ignore that side. See, I'm not the best painter in the world. I do fuck up, and I can admit that I fuck up. I don't like. I'm not like one of these people who edit their videos, so they edit out every fuck up they make. I keep mine in. 
sometimes. Sometimes it's really bad or embarrassing, I do hide it. Look at their leg, it's two separate armor sections. And it's really annoying. Because it's really hard to paint. That bit up in there. Absolutely hate it. And they have vents on the back as well. Little cons uh, cable ports for some reason. Don't know why they have them on the back of their leg, of all places. On both legs too. Why do they need connection ports on the back of their legs? What possible d need do they have for that? I want to know the logic behind whoever designed them. I want to ask him, why? Why do they need ports on the back of their legs? What is so important that their legs have to be plugged? I just realised, maybe um, Invictus War Suits. Which are terrible and I don't even own one. They look that ugly. Um, then I just thought, they wear completely different armour, the Space Marines, the pilot them. I thought, okay, maybe people piloting other things, like uh, aircraft or tanks and stuff. And I thought, they all wear different armour. Like, all the tanks and stuff, they're, they're all wearing different armour, the crew. They all seem to be modelled with the um, scout armour, Phobos armour. Or well, the new scout armour, which is Phobos. Um, which doesn't have the connection ports, ironically, I don't think. No, they don't. There's one. It doesn't have connection ports because they have smaller knee pads. Uh, legs, even. So it's not so they can pilot stuff because the pilots wear different armour. Which doesn't have them. So, what the hell sort of need is it? What are they plugging into their fucking legs? With such regularity, they need every single space room needs two of them. One on each leg. What, I ask you, what? Was it just a design choice to make paint of them even fucking harder? That's a really big highlight. Getting angry. Things are getting worse. Seriously, why would they give them such stupid things like access ports on the back of the leg? And they very clearly have no use for it. So, there we have it. There's the black armour. 